Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Now, I trust that your heart is full of the joy of the Lord and that you are ready to learn new things about the God whom we serve. Now, we are continuing in our study of the story of the Bible, and we are in Genesis chapter 1. Yesterday, we covered verses 1 through 5. Today, we want to pick up in verse 6. Now, we see that God has created the light, and that would be day 1. In verse 6, it says, And God said, Let there be a firmament. Now, this would be the expanse above us, what we would call the sky. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Now, that's important, but we'll address that in a moment. Now, God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament or under the sky from the waters which were above the firmament or above the sky. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2, where Paul is writing to the Corinthians, he says, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knows. Such a one was caught up unto the third heavens. Now, as we understand it, there are three heavens. There's the heaven or the sky as we know it. Then there's the expanse beyond the sky, which we would call space. And then there is actually the kingdom of heaven, which would be the third heaven. And that was the place that Paul was called up to. And he met and sat with the Lord Jesus and was instructed on the message that he was to give unto the Gentiles. And so when it speaks of here in verse 6 and 7 that God created the firmament or the first heaven, he created the expanse by which man, beast, and fowl of the air would live under. And this would be different from space or even the third heaven because the elements that we need to maintain life on earth are contained within this first heaven, oxygen and things like that. Now it says in verse 8, God called this firmament heaven, the first heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Now did you notice something that was missing? It may be hard at this point because you've only read about one day. But in day 1, in verse 4, it says God saw the light which he had created on day 1, that it was good. But if you'll notice, for day 2, in the creation of the firmament, he never says he saw that it was good. Well, in verse 9, God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place and let the dry land appear and it was so. So God begins to divide the mass of water into divisions of water, which we would call seas or oceans. Now, remember in verse 6, it said in the creation of the firmament, in the midst of the waters, let it divide the waters from the waters the waters that are above the firmament and the waters that are below the firmament. In Proverbs chapter 8, verse 28, we are told when he, God, established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. So again, we see the waters above, we see the waters below. In Genesis chapter 7, verse 11, it says in the 600 year of Noah's life in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up or the waters below the firmament and the windows of heaven were opened or the waters above the firmament. Now in the division of the waters below the firmament, again, what we would call seas or oceans, dry land appears, which we would call earth. And God saw that it was good in verse 10. Now notice, God saw that it was good. And God said in verse 11, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, herb yielding seed after his kind, the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, on the second day, God never said 
he saw that it was good, but on the third day, he says he saw that it was good twice. And this is so important to the people of Israel that even today, more marriages take place on the third day than any other day of the week because they consider it a double blessing. And so on the third day, God has created land, which has divided the waters. And upon the land, he has created all vegetation bearing fruit after its own kind. And the evening and the morning were the third day. Now, verse 14, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. Let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. So God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, which is the sun, of course, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Now, when I was growing up, people always told me that the light of the moon was a reflection of the light from earth. And that made a lot of sense to me because there were a lot of lights on the earth due to electricity. But what my tiny mind didn't understand at such a young age is that we've only had electricity for a hundred or so years. And so how was the moon lit for the first 5,000 plus years? Well, because God made the greater light to rule the day, the sun, to give off its own light and the moon to give off its own light to rule the night. Verse 17 says, God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Now God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wells, and every living creature that moves, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the sea, and let fowl multiply in the earth. Now notice, friends, we are in the midst of the glorious, wonderful creation of God, and all that is being created, God saw that it was good. Until man arrives, man is the only creature upon this earth that seeks to go his own way and defile the rule of God. And that's why we are told in chapter 7 of Genesis, verse 6, it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Why? Because man has corrupted the creation of God. What he intended to be so glorious, so full of splendor and wonder, and man has brought darkness upon the earth. And yet in the original creation, God saw that it was good. Verse 22, God blessed the fowl of the air. God blessed the creature of the sea, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowl multiply in the earth. God is filling his creation with all beautiful, wonderful, glorious things. In verse 24, God says, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping things, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us... Now we addressed this yesterday, let us, remember in verse one, it says in the beginning, God, this is Elohim in the Hebrew, it's used in a plural sense. And it said, God in plurality created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Well, where is the sun in this? Well, if you'll recall 1 John chapter 1, it says that which was from the beginning. Remember, Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God. So in the beginning, well, John says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7 says, There are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. 
Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says, by Jesus, all things were created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus. He is before all things and by him, all things consist. Now, Jesus is called the word here. And if we look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, it says, God said, he spoke the word, let there be light, and there was light. John chapter 1, verse 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Verse 14 says, the word was made flesh. So when it says in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, we know that this is speaking of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He continues by saying, let man have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so man has been given dominion over the earth. And at this point in creation, there is no greater honor. Yet, as we saw, it is going to break God's heart to ever have created man upon the earth because man is going to corrupt the beauty and the wonder of what God has created. Verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now, it would appear from this statement that when Adam was created, he was both male and female in the same person. And when God takes out his rib and creates woman, he's taken out the female aspect that is in the male and created a second human form known as woman. Now, this is a little bit more theologically deep than we have time to go into this morning, but simply read the passage for yourself. God created man in his own image, a single individual. In the image of God created he him, a single individual. Male and female created he them. There's plurality. And yet we know that woman hasn't been created at this point. So the male, the individual, is both male and female in one. And maybe that's why when male and female come together in the marriage union, they now again become one, what they were originally intended to be. Now it says in verse 28, God blessed them, speaking of one individual, but male and female in one. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. At the beginning of creation, God never intended man to eat other creatures, only to partake of vegetation. And that would be our meat or our food. Now in verse 30, he says to every beast of the earth, to every fowl of the air and to everything that creeps upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat. So even at the beginning of creation, animals were to eat other animals. Everything breathing lived off the goodness of what the earth provided. And God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, we've talked about the evening and the morning as a 24-hour cycle. One other thing to point out, in America, or Western culture even, our morning starts when the sun rises. But for the Jewish people, for the people of Israel, it has always begun at sundown. And the reason is, is because God indicates the evening first then the morning were the first day. So their day begins at sundown and goes to the next sunrise, completely opposite of what we have made it. And yet, if you were going to be true to the Bible, your day would begin at sundown and the evening would begin at sunrise. Now, what we have seen in this creation story that God has filled the world with wonder, with splendor, with beauty, with color, 
and with all. Remember, when we began this story, in verse 2, chapter 1, the earth was without form. It was empty. It was desolate. It was useless. It was void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. God steps in, speaks the word, and fills with majesty. If you could have been there on that day as Adam first opened his eyes, what a breathtaking wonder that must have been. The earth full of wonder and beauty and color and all created for the benefit of man. And as our imaginations run wild, friends, remember that there is going to be a rebirth of the earth. We will return back to that state and we will see what Adam once saw. And that is the seed of hope that has been entwined with the souls of all the followers of God. As Job said in chapter 19, verse 25, I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he will stand at the latter day upon the earth. And so if nothing else brings you joy today, friend, let that captivate you. As you read Genesis chapter 1, Know that this is not just a story that you're reading of something that happened so long ago, but there is coming a day where you're going to experience this. You're going to see it in its full reality, and you will stand in awe before the living God when you hear him say, I saw all things, and it was good. Hallelujah, friends. Well, I trust your day today will be blessed, will be full of the joy of the Lord and that you'll walk in the simplicity of knowing God and honoring all that he has said to be just and true. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.